This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, this is the uh, fourth lecture now on limiting factors, chapter six of the notes on linear programming. Uh, we've done example one, and sorry, my graph has sounded a bit messy now because of what I was trying to explain. Uh, but we do know the optimum um, production was at point B, uh, which was five executive chairs and 30 standard chairs. And it gave us a total contribution of 225. But if you move on to example two, he says, using the information from example one, calculate the slack for each of the constraints. And the constraints for materials, labour and demand. Well, what we mean by slack is, is there any spare capacity? Are we using all of the constraint or not? Uh, for instance, um, we were limited to 80 kilos of material. Are we using all 80 kilos? It may be that we're only using 70 kilos, and if we are, we only buy 70, but the difference, the remaining 10, would be spare capacity or slack. So we need to ask ourselves, at point B, at our optimum, are we using all of the materials available? Are we using all the labour available? Are we using all the demand available? Well, if you've understood what I mean, or what we mean by spare capacity or slack, um, the answer to the first two should be very obvious. Are we using all the materials available at point B? Yes, we are. And why? How do I know? Because we're on the materials line. If we're on the materials line, we are using all 80 kilos. So materials, we're using all 80 for materials. Uh, the slack, therefore, is zero. <coughs> we're 80 available, we're using 80, no spare. What about labour? There were 80 available, are we using all 80? Yes, we are. We're on the labour line. And if we're on the line, we are using the full 80. So again, labour, there is no spare, there's no slack. The third constraint was the demand for E. Uh, the maximum was 10. Are we using all of the demand? Are we producing 10? Or is the spare demand? Well, of course, no, we're not. Because the demand line is there, and yet our optimum is only here. We're not producing as many E's as we could actually sell. And how many are we producing? We're producing five. And so the slack, well, demand, we could have sold ten. We're only producing five, and therefore we're only capable of selling five. So there is spare demand, there is slack of five units. So, again, uh, quite popular, you know, as an MCQ, a multiple choice question, uh, I, I, I've said twice, I think, any bit of this could be asked, and certainly it could be tested that you understand what slack is. Uh, the final thing you could be asked, though, is the last bit on the page, shadow prices. And it's the same example, but it says, example three, sorry, uh, using the information from example one, that's what I meant by same example, calculate the shadow price of each of the constraints, materials, labour and demand. Well, let me first write up what the definition is of shadow price, and then I'll actually show you how we do it. The shadow price... is the most extra we would be prepared to pay
for one extra unit of the limited resource. At the moment we are limited, there's only 80 kilos of material, there's only 180 hours of labour, there's only a demand of 10 for executives. But if we could get one extra kilo of material, if we could get one extra hour of labour, if we could get one extra unit demand for executive, then how much extra would it be worth paying for it? Well, one of them is very obvious. What about demand for E? At the moment, the maximum demand is 10 units. Suppose that some way I could pay some money and get the demand up to 11 units. Would it be worth paying someone to increase the demand up to 11? No, it wouldn't. And why wouldn't it? Because the other constraints limited us to only producing five executive. We're not going to produce five, more than five anyway. So even if the demand was 11, it wouldn't change what we ended up producing. It wouldn't give us any more money. So there'd be absolutely no point in paying somebody to increase the demand for E. The shadow price would be zero. What about materials? Here we are going to have to do some work. And why? Because at the moment we are using uh, all 80 kilos that are available. If we could get one more unit, uh, which is kilos here, if we could get one more kilo of material, if we had 81 kilos, then think about it. Don't worry, we're not going to redraw the graph. Uh, but if the limit was um, 81 kilos, the materials line would actually move out very slightly. And with more materials, we could produce a little bit more. I don't know whether it's B or C, uh, um, sorry, whether it's um, S or E. But because the line moves out slightly, point B would change very slightly. And if we end up producing a bit more, we can make more contribution. And if we can make more contribution, then it would be worth paying money to get an extra kilo. Now, as I said, we don't actually uh, need to redraw the graph, and don't worry uh, at all. One extra kilo would change that line very, very slightly. And so the optimum would still be where materials crossed labour. But the combination, would, when we solve the two together, would be slightly different than it is at the moment. And so what we do is we say, well, at point B, what would happen to those two constraints if we did have one extra kilo of material? Well, the materials constraint was 2S plus 4E. Uh, it was equal to 80, but if you have one more kilo, it now is equal to 81. The labour constraint, well, that doesn't change. We only look at each one individually. So labour would stay the same at 5s plus 6e is uh, 180. And so just like we did before, let's solve them together. And I said enough about how to do this. Oh dear. What? Sorry, I wrote it in the wrong place. How embarrassing. I do apologise. Back to where we were for materials. Uh, with one extra kilo, it becomes 2s plus 4e equals 81, uh, but that's where it crosses the labour line. The labour constraint for this doesn't change, so 5s plus 6e equals 180. And now I can carry on from what I was saying, and I do apologise. Uh, we solve them together. I said enough about, you know, whichever way you're happy with, but I'll do it the same way I did before. 
So if I multiply the first equation by 2.5, uh, 2 by 5 times 2, we get 5s. 2.5 times 4, we get 10e. Uh, this time, 2.5 times 81. I get 202.5. And having got the same number of s's in each equation, if I subtract the second equation from the third, that's from the third, 5s minus 5s is 0, 10e minus 6e is 4e, uh, 202.5 minus uh, 180 is 22.5, e therefore 22.5 divided by 4 uh, becomes 5.625. So we'd end up making slightly more ease than before. Now, some people get very upset and say, well, how can you make 5.6 executive chairs? Uh, don't worry and don't round it. Um, we always assume that the answer we end up with is the number of chairs perhaps per week. Now here, the, it was hours and material per week. And so to make exactly 5.625 obviously is impossible, but it, as an average, some weeks you'll be making five, some weeks you'll be making six, but on average, 5.625. Uh, what about S? Well, like before, if I substitute in the first equation, 2S plus, well, 4E, four times 5.625 is 22.5 equals 81. 2s, therefore, subtract 22.5 from both sides is 58.5. s, 58.5 divided by 2 is 29.25. And so what's happened, if we did have one extra kilo, we end up being able to make slightly more E's and slightly fewer S's. But what would happen to the contribution? The new contribution C, remember, was 6S plus 9E. So 6 times 29.25, uh, 9 times 5.625, the contribution uh, 175.5 plus 2.5. With one extra kilo, I end up with a total contribution of 226.125. Now that's if I have the extra kilo, if I have 81 kilos. Uh, what was it before when we only had 80? The old contribution. If you look back, uh, I think it was $225. And therefore, having the one extra kilo increases the contribution by the difference. And that is the shadow price. So here it's... Uh, 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 so there's the arithmetic, but one final thing I must stress, although the shadow price of the materials is $1.125, that doesn't mean that we're prepared to pay $1.125. You see, that is the extra contribution we would earn. 
But how was the contribution originally calculated? When we worked out the contributions, we didn't hear they were given. But when they were calculated, they'd have taken the selling price less all the costs, including the cost of materials, at the current price. Now, because we were given the contributions, I don't know what the current price was. Maybe, maybe, but I'm inventing a figure. Don't ask where it comes from. Maybe the current price of materials is, ooh, £10 a kilo. Now, again, don't ask me where that figure came from. I just invented it. We hadn't needed to know it here because they'd given us the contribution. But in working out the contribution, we'd have used $10 a kilo. And if we carried on paying $10 a kilo, if we could get one extra uh, kilo and pay $10 for it, the normal price, then fine. The contribution would stay at $6 and $9 a unit. We'd make an extra 1.125. But of course, to buy extra, we're likely to have to pay more. You know, why was it limited in the first place? Perhaps there's only a limit, limited supply at normal prices. We can always get more of anything, but perhaps we have to pay extra. Well, if we carried on paying normal price, we get an extra 1.125 contribution. But if we have to pay extra for that one extra kilo, well, we're prepared to pay extra, over and above the current price. But the most extra we'd pay is $1.125. So on my invented figure of a current price of $10, if we could buy extra and pay ooh, $11, it's worth doing. That one extra costs us an extra dollar, but gives us an extra 1.125 contribution. You know, we get the net benefit. But if people are going to charge $12, $2 extra for a kilo, it wouldn't be worthwhile. You're not going to pay $2 to get the contribution up by only $1.125. So please, please think about that. Uh, it's a standard trick for the exam, but check out how yeah, we calculate the shadow price. But do, do, do make sure you're convinced that the figure we end up with is the most extra you'd be prepared to pay for an extra unit. Well, that's how we do it. All right, the question itself wants to know the shadow price of materials for labour and demand. We've done it for demand. It's not worth paying any extra. Uh, and I've done it for materials. I think I've said enough. I am not going to do labour on the screen. I mean, the best way of checking that you've understood what I've done, do it yourself, the labour. There's an answer at the back so you can check yourself at the back of the lecture notes. But have a go yourself for labour. If you get it wrong, look back at um, this lecture, check again how I did it for materials, and if you're still not clear, obviously ask me ask the tutor for it. If you do get it right in the app, then you get us again, as always. Uh, make sure you have a go at the online test where there are five MCQs to have a fight.